start it, let me use my hands to talk. Every time you start it, uh, it that oil has to get pumped uh, up through those filter housings and over to and around the pressure gauge and uh <laughs> Get the filthy whore going, get her over to the shop, change the oil, give her a bath, tidy things up. She was run hard and put away wet. You can see the heat door. I gotta get that back on. Okay, so this door goes in there. And I took it off last fall. When I was working up in the Snake River and never put it back on. Woo! <laughs> and now I know why I didn't put it back on. Got to crawl under here, see if I can get it in. There we go, there's that. Anyway. That's awesome when somebody can build a piece with all these little bends and these deals to go in and it fits. Let's see if she'll chug a lug. It's a little chilly this morning and got my jacket on. Just gotta heat the glow plugs for a while. Filthy Whore's been sitting here for uh, the end of, I think we brought it home sometime in November, so it's almost been a year it's been sitting here. Well, that don't sound good. What's it going on there? get water in it stick a valve that don't sound good jeez louise why is it not going jeez jeez don't tell me that stuff <laughs> Ooh, that don't sound good at all. That got water down it. I bet I got exhaust valves that are stuck. Great. That's just great. There's a drain in the bottom of those mufflers. How would it... God, I've never had one get water in it. Shit. Firing on one hole is all. Gonna have dead batteries here in a minute. Yeah, 
Yeah, we got big problems here. Great. That's just super duper great. Oh, man. That's just awful if that got water in it. Oh, no. Jeez. Well, let's go see if we can get number two to chug lug. Oh yeah, this one will, she's uh, pushing on all of them. Take the back and it'll go. do with this one now that just makes me sick I got it there's got to be some stuck valves exhaust valves a bunch of them apparently that got water down it shit <laughs> she fired up I do not know what was going on there absolutely don't know it's turning over you heard it it's only hitting on one cylinder so I hooked the charger to it while I was over here draining oil and number two and I just sat there and cranked it for a long time till it got engine oil pressure and I heated the glow plugs for a minute and she started firing and then just took off no missing, no popping, no nothing. Uh, Dang if I know what was going on. Just acted like it didn't have compression on a bunch of cylinders. Scared me to death. Figured I'd be taking the head off and doing valves or something. 
I've never in my entire life put buckets over these as long as I face them the tip outs to the north uh, all our storms come from the southwest I just never had a problem but I'm I'm gonna check that hole in the bottom of the muffler and make sure it's clear because if you do get water it will drain out that hole because it's deep down in there and water starts building up it'll drain out I need to check all these make sure the hole is clear oh boy scared me scared me very much badly she's a running so I didn't wind it up I didn't do anything I just let it sit there and chug it idle and that's what I'm gonna do for a while you think if, a, if it had a valve that was stuck or something that she'd be missing and popping but it's not it just took off so I don't know maybe it maybe it was a fuel issue and it was only hitting on one that's why it sounded that way I don't know I'm just dang grateful there's no damage none at all Okay, so we're not building any air. There's a small leak in an airline there I can hear, but not big enough to cause this problem. We've had a lot of trouble with this old girl not building air. That compressor we bought, reman one. And look at that, there's nothing in those tanks, absolutely nothing. It just went bye bye. So I'll get the shop air and pop it full air and see what that does. I don't know what's going on unless the unloader and the compressor is stuck. So get this one up here. I'm going to go get Matt's 613. Clean up this dirt mess. He says I got to check the hydraulic oil. I don't know where you check the hydraulic oil. I think it's up here where the fuel tank would normally be. On a real scraper. Not a big Johnson. The big Johnson. Cat tractor with a Johnson scraper. So that's the hydro tank. And I do see oil there, right there. God, where, does he, where do you put the oil in? I don't know. Let's see if this little thing will run. See, it's been sitting here forever. Okay, key on. Contact. Dead. It's dead. Matt. Dead in the door now. Hmm. Nothing. Oh well. These batteries are dead and I just rolled up all that electric cord. I could have put the charger on it. Sheesh. Three fat girls. <laughs> we're, hey, shh, shh. we're not starting a forklift, okay? Shh. Shh. Hey, hey. No. We're filming here. Quiet on the frickin' set. <laughs> God. So I just I I put oil on the scraper. I got I got some I think down that stupid hole. I mean they put that in the worst place in the world. You got a ram, an air cleaner, a pipe. Uh what were you thinking when it came to 
putting fluids in these pieces of equipment. I mean, I that's one thing that just flabbergasts me. Everything I have, it's like miserable to put oil in it. <laughs> I mean, surely you could have made that come out here somewhere. And yeah, I had a funnel. And I, you know how I hate funnels. Dirty funnels. Messy, dirty funnels. Don't want to mess with them. I just want to pour oil in. Oh, jeez. I think I need a beer. I need a stiff drink. I'm here to tell you. And I still haven't even started on the filthy whore. That's even worse because of those canister filters. Bitch, 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 bitch. <laughs> okay, you got to laugh and bitch at the same time. I'm going to find me a different funnel. So what I'm using is this one over here, which is awesome. I like the screw on lids because it keeps them clean. But I need one probably another 12 inches long. If I had one 12 more inches long, man, I'd be in, I'd be in Fat City, huh, Griffey? Griffey don't even like it, do ya? He's, that's why you was barking at it, huh? Let's, uh, let's pretend we're gonna, hey, you wanna start steam cleaner? You wanna start steam cleaner? I, oh, he, let me move this so he can do his hot laps. Okay, you ready? Are you ready? You ready? Yeah? You ready? Get him, buddy. You ready? Oh. Oh, oh there you go. I gotta bite that rubber hose. Get the rubber hose. Get it over here. Get the rubber hose. Get it. Oh, he loves, he loves those motors, huh? Look at him. Can't go and kill those things. <laughs> uh, what are we doing next? You wanna go you wanna go put free on in the scraper? Do you? Uh -huh. okay. So we need new teeth for the excavator bucket on the 336. And two weeks ago, I went down, said, hey, I need some new teeth. They said, well, we, we've got two. So, okay, throw those in the truck. So I got two. So the other three will have to come from the warehouse. Okay. So I didn't go down the next week. And that was there Friday getting some stuff for the number one. Hey, I need my teeth. They couldn't find them anywhere. So they said, well, we'll find out where they're at and give you a call back. Well, it's the end of the business day on Monday. Nobody's called back. Well, I found myself out here in uh, Idaho, of all places, and uh, speaking with a gentleman here that's known on the, on the internet, uh, a trucking YouTuber. Uh, by the name of Jay Paydirt. Why don't you go ahead and formally introduce yourself so uh, everyone uh, will understand who we're talking to. Uh, my name is Jeff Anderson. I got a construction company here in Idaho called Anderson Construction. And uh, I got into YouTube about, uh, I think, seven years ago, uh, sharing my videos. And uh, it's become pretty popular. And it's been a lot of fun. So. We're headed down to the truck show in Lehigh and uh, gonna show a new invention called the Switchblade Turbo. Oh yeah, that'll be that uh, the Great Lakes uh, truck show there in uh, Lehigh. Well, I guess we should probably back up just a little bit and uh, tell some of the folks uh, a little bit more about yourself, uh, uh, especially, you know, what you do. You know, you're a trucker, but you got a piece of machinery back there. So give us uh, give us a story on, uh, on what you do for business. Well, I started out running heavy equipment when I was eight years old. Uh, my dad needed help, so he put me on a D8 cat, pushing a DW20 scraper, and uh, that's how I got started and got dirt in my, my veins. And uh, he taught me 
how to work on stuff and how to move dirt. And uh, I got on my own, oh, probably the early 1980s, I started out on my own. And we do a lot of custom work for farmers. Uh, we cover rock piles, uh, lava rock formations out in the field under uh, center pivot irrigation. Uh, we do quite a bit of commercial. Uh, we kind of hop back and forth between the commercial and the farm, depending on uh, how the farm economy is. Uh, last four years, the farm economy has been in the tank, so we've kind of shifted gears to more commercial. We just uh, finished a pretty good size uh, road project for the Bureau of Land Management. Uh, those videos are all posted. KT tires still they still have that new tire smell. Mmm. Nothing like new tire smell. So I've got a leak here. Looks like the turbo drain back o-ring. So I'm gonna have to steamer clean that off and reseal it. So I had to use the forklift to raise this bell up enough I could get a jug in there and hit the funnel. So this thing for some reason will leak down. It doesn't leak around this. We took this into D at S and G. And this was the old packing style head, and here's the four bolt holes. So what we had him do is bore that head out, push the sleeve in, and recut the grooves put a head wearing in it and the buffer seal and the backup seal set up and then I think he's got some holes drilled in there and some screws to make sure that can't come out but I think he put it in pretty tight and glued it okay man so these old cat scrapers have what they call environmental drains and these are awesome completely awesome there we go so you can turn them off and on and change buckets and try not to make a mess if you can keep the bucket in the right spot Black gold. Well, the first thing you know, old Jeff Millionaire. Ken Post said, Jeff Luke Wesner.
the splashy part I hate. It starts splashing and you get crap all over you. Like this. Open it up some more so it's splash there. Yeah, that's the way I'm looking there. You can put a, a screw up this pipe thread up in there and you can take like a three quarter one inch pipe or nipple and then a piece of hose and do it that way which is nice but i can't seem to find my i had a nipple that screwed up in there the filthy whores got a bigger drain than the other ones they sized them down decided they didn't need to be one inch or whatever they are I'm going to cut it off there because I hate handling a clear full bucket. So the other thing about this one is where it's got those cartridge style filters. Um, there's a drain plug on the filter housing, but I don't know what you're going to drain it in. It's a mess. So what I'll do with this one is leave the drain plug open overnight in a bucket. And all that oil out of the filter housing will drain back down through the galley and through the plug and the intake screen and right into the bucket. And then in the morning, when I take the filters out, they'll be dry. They won't be dripping oil out of them. So everybody's telling me I need to put a switchblade on the filthy horde. I probably do because this T18 that's on there now is pumping oil. And they're bad for that. And sometimes when it's idling, you see a blue haze out of it. And I noticed my air fuel ratio diaphragm cover has got oil stains, dirt sticking to it. So I'm betting money that it's uh, turbo pumping oil, crapping up the after cooler. So what I'm going to do is turn it off and I'm going to go get another bucket because you're going to be shocked how much more oil comes out when that filter has some drains. You saw when I started this one how long it took to get oil pressure um, versus the ones with the spin on I converted to spin ons so every time you shut one of these down all that oil uh, let me turn this off and turn you off. so that plug right there is how you drain that housing but what are you going to put under that to hold all that oil? 
that's only that tall to fit under it. Nothing. It's just going to go everywhere. So every time you shut one of these off hot, that oil sits and drains out of there. Goes through the oil galley and down through the oil pump and back into the pan. So every time you start it, I'm going to use my hands to talk. Every time you start it, uh, it that oil has to get pumped. Uh, up through those filter housings and over to and around the pressure gauge and uh, <laughs> Anyway, it takes longer to get oil pressure whereas the spin-on type is full of oil It doesn't run out <laughs> I, I hope that clears things up Okay Another day shot in the ass. Beautiful sunset. Clear day. It was beautiful. So tomorrow, I'll come out, change the oil in the FW, and fix a whole bunch more stuff. I told my wife, those scrapers are like having three wives. Each one of them has their own little problems <laughs> and their attitudes <sighs> and they cost a lot of money good night found myself out here in uh, Idaho of all places and uh, speaking with a gentleman here that's known on the on the internet uh, a trucking youtuber uh, by the name of Jay Paydirt why don't you go ahead and formally introduce yourselves <laughs> Thanks, Chris.